So I've been doing aquaponics for almost eight years now, and along the way, I've made a lot of mistakes. And today I wanna to share with you my top five mistakes that I think beginner growers make when they start into aquaponics. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode from New Agrarian on YouTube, where we're all about aquaponics, hydroponics, and agriculture. Today's episode is all about preventable mistakes in the aquaponics space. So let's get started. The first one doesn't have anything to do with the aquaponics farming itself, but it has to do with the hesitance to actually get started in the field. A lot of people may watch this channel or they may consider doing aquaponics, but they might think that it is complicated or it is expensive. Yes, there are systems that are more mechanically involved and work better than others, and there's a lot of really simple systems that also work. I've got my friend here, she's getting a little impatient. There's also ways to build cheap aquaponics systems. So one of the places I recommend starting out is Facebook Marketplace. So I'm gonna go ahead and open Facebook Marketplace. And a couple of the equipment that is really readily available in most states are these IBC water totes and 50 gallon water drums. Let's see what kind of prices they are. So these are 30 gallon plastic barrels. Those are $15 each. 50 gallon barrels are a better option, but these for 15 bucks, you can make a settling tank, you can make a clarifier, you can even make a fish tank out of this, a small one. Let's keep going. 90 bucks for this IBC tote, not bad. 75 bucks is kind of like where I would try to buy an IBC tote, but one thing, like if you look at this one, bottle only, no cage, and it had home heating oil in it. Make sure that it had something food grade in it prior to you purchasing it, so not oil, no chemicals. Like you want one that had like a fruit puree or a ginger puree, uh, maybe jalapeno puree I've had them in, something like that, olive oil. Here's some for $85 food grade. Uh, that's great, that's a great buy. And honestly, one of these would do a substantially sized aquaponics system definitely big enough for you and your family. You can probably have a successful cheap startup aquaponics system for way smaller than this 275 gallon tank, but I'm just showing you, you got your fish tank, you might have a section of that tank that you can use as a grow bed. Very, very affordable to get started. For a hundred dollar investment, you can have a fish tank, a filter, and those things will last you many, many years. There's also these yellow storage containers, similar to these at Costco, you can buy them for like 10 bucks. Those could be a fish tank, those could be a hydroponic tank. My point is, there are cheap options. And as far as the complicated side to this, yeah, in the beginning it might seem a little bit complicated, but the learning curve in aquaponics is super fast. Stay tuned to my channel for more information in the future on how to actually perform aquaponics. The next mistake that I think a lot of people make is undersizing their equipment. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go crazy, but I think there's a few areas in aquaponics that require equipment that is larger than you think. And those areas are water pumps, pipes, and air pumps. Water pumps are definitely something that you wanna oversize when you build an aquaponics system. You can always cut back the water flow, but you can't increase the max water flow on a pump. If you have a little tiny home aquaponics system in like a 10 by 10 area, a thousand gallons per hour pump will definitely do the job for you. I wouldn't buy any of those pumps that are like 200, 300 gallons per hour unless you have like an aquarium size system. Those are really, really small pumps. I think for like $10 extra, you can get a pretty sizable water pump and you definitely can use a valve or something to regulate the flow. Pipe sizes, sometimes it's difficult to estimate the water flow speed through your system, so it's always better to use larger pipe diameter than you think you're gonna need, and this is also gonna help with clogs and things from blocking the water flow down the line. Air pumps can be tricky. I did a video on my favorite type of commercial air pump a few months ago. I'll do a video in the future solely about air pumps, but again, you wanna overestimate the size of air pump you need Oxygen is a great thing to have in surplus in your aquaponics system. Mistake number three is planning on things to fail. First of all, equipment fails. So if you have a vital piece of equipment, such as a regenerative blower, like I talked about in a previous video, you always wanna have a second one. Same with like your main water pump to your system. Things eventually break, things eventually die, and you need to have a backup. Next, you wanna ensure that all of the actively running components of your system are secured and have backups if possible. So any airline connections, especially ones that go to a fish tank, you wanna use a hose clamp, you wanna have multiple air stones, you wanna have perhaps a monitoring system in the event that there is equipment failure. Basically, you need to make sure that you've done every single possible thing to ensure that this air connection doesn't fail. 
PVC connections fail. Usually PVC glue, at least in my system, two or three years, it's gonna start to get weak. Think about the constant sunlight that hits these pipes. If you can keep them shaded, that's your best bet to ensure the longevity of those connections. But above all, just take your time when it comes to assembling the system. You're going to experience equipment failure, but you can kind of ensure success by triple checking, quadruple checking your progress along the way. Air connections are the most catastrophic things that I've experienced in aquaponics. A simple kink in a hose has wiped out six of my tanks before. Really, really silly things. Double check, triple check that those are all set. Mistake number four is poor space utilization. When it comes to the actual layout of your system, you wanna make sure that you maximize the plant growing area of your system. This is the most profitable part of your aquaponics system and it's probably the part that is going to yield you the most product if you're a home grower. So anytime that you can put equipment vertically, it's going to save you space down the line. You don't wanna have a lot of empty space between equipment and you definitely wanna have a good solid sketch of the layout of your equipment before you start building. And the last mistake, mistake number five, is keeping the system clean. There's a lot of different areas in an aquaponics system that require cleaning. Water quality is a big one. Ensure that you have adequate filtration throughout the process. This is kind of the foundational piece of both your fish production and your plant production. Gotta have clean water. Your equipment, dirty equipment and floor space can harbor pests. It can look bad to customers. When people walk into your farm, you want them to be wild. You want the floor to be clean. You want the equipment to be scrubbed on the exterior. You wanna keep it as clean as possible for both the food safety standpoint and your customer standpoint. You wanna keep it clean from pests, which involves daily monitoring of your plants. It can be a little bit tedious to do this, but you wanna make sure that you check every inch of plant space in your farm because pests can pop up really quickly. And when they do, you wanna make sure that you can take care of it. And when it comes to daily monitoring, daily walkthroughs are another vital part of the success of your system. Even if everything looks fine, use your senses to find potential things that could go awry. I have heard hissing airlines. That's a leaking airline. If you see something that's bubbling at a lower rate or not bubbling at all, if you see slowed water flow, there's just these little things that as a grower you need to be observant of in order to prevent catastrophic failure from happening. So I hope those tips help you guys. Above all, just don't be afraid to get started in the field. Again, the learning curve for this is really, really fast. You're gonna make mistakes. That's okay, it's all part of it. As long as you learn from those mistakes, that's the important thing. So thanks for watching guys. By the way, if you haven't done so already, make sure you check out my other channel, Dishes and Fishes. It's a cooking and recreational fishing channel if you're into that. And I'll catch you in the next episode from New Agrarian. Peace.